1953, the Polo Grounds, New York City. You're about to see the big fight. The full fight has fought between the challenger, Roland La Starza, and champion, Rocky Marciano, defending the world's heavyweight crown in a scheduled 15-round bout. The air is so chilly, both men enter the ring wearing sweatpants beneath their robes. Announcer Johnny Addy checks the color of Rocky's trunks just before making the official announcement. From the Bronx, New York, wearing dark trunks and weighing 184 and three quarters, the Bronx Express, Roland La Starza. Three and a half years before, La Starza lost about to Marciano by just three points. Roland felt he won that disputed contest and believes he can do it again. In the opposite corner, the unbeaten champion, who won the title from Jersey Joe Walcott in 1952 with a single punch. Wearing white trunks and weighing 185, the Brockton blockbuster, Rocky Marciano. Before the big fight actually begins, let's see how each man trained for the event. Roland LaStarza worked at a camp in Greenwood Lake, New York, a site formerly used by his opponent, Rocky Marciano. Here, Dan Florio tapes the challenger's hands prior to a final workout. At this time, the stars weighed 190 pounds. Here, Florio laces the gloves on the stars, who is ready now to do some sparring. The challenger wears a head guard as protection against last-minute injuries. Florio, the third man here in the ring, was formerly trainer for Jersey Joe Walcott. Loosening up the neck and shoulders. See you later, boy. Meanwhile, a plane from New York City lands at Grossinger Airport in the Catskills, where the champion is in training. The engines are cut, and out steps Commissioner Bob Christenberry of the New York State Athletic Commission. Greeting him is Al Weil, Marciano's manager. And here's The Rock himself, on his way to a checkup by Dr. Vincent Nardiello. here in round four, and he leads Marciano on the scorecards of the three ring officials. Experts at ringside are speculating about a possible upset. The year 1953 was full of such upsets. Ezra Charles by Neil Valdez and Harold Johnson. Rex Lane twice by Earl Walls. Kid Gavilan by Danny Wamber. Billy Graham by Carmen Basilio. The consensus now, it could happen again. Rocky attempts to get inside, but fails to land. Holding back his left as the stars are moves in to tie him up. The Rock couldn't find a home for that left. Watch closely. Rocky drives the stars into a corner, but the challenger twists right out of it and ties up the champion. His handlers are calling, stay out of the corners. And that's what Roland is trying to do. He knows all too well that Marciano caught Lewis and Walker against the ropes. Rocky still not too effective, but exerting tremendous pressure. Crowding, all with him. At the end of the frame, we'll call round four even. And against every set of strands. Rocky continually attempting to move in and wail away. Pounding, pounding. Marciano is a hard man to hit because of his crouching, weaving style and his ever-moving tactics as he shuffles forward.
The Stars are ready to try a right that falls short. He's missing. Another indication that the challenger is tiring. With his back to the ropes, Lestarza catches a left hook. There it is. He's throwing fewer and fewer punches. He's badly weakened, running out of juice. Watch this power-packed right by Marciano that just misses. The Stars are fighting back off the ropes. But Rocky is right back on top of him, ready to deliver a pair of crushing rights to the jaw. Once again, Rocky has forced the Stars into the ropes, and now they're back in mid-ring. The Stars are holding desperately. Look at him grab Rocky's arm. At the bell, it's another frame, the fourth in a row. And now, round 11, destined to be the final round of this scheduled 15-round bout for the World's Heavyweight Championship between challenger Roland the Starza in dark trunks and champion Rocky Marciano. The Starza's handlers have covered his face with grease. He has two cuts, one over the bridge of his nose, the other near his right eye. Both eyes are puffy. Now, when Marciano throws in a left, the Starza holds. He's a tired boy. Rocky looking for an opening to drop that big right-hand bomb. 45,000 fans in New York City's polo grounds, well pleased with the fight they're seeing tonight, many expecting a knockout at any moment. The stars are wrestled back off the ropes, a game effort, but one that is back toward the ropes. That's where he caught Walcott, you remember, to win the title, against the ropes. Marciano misses a left hook, then connects with a smashing right. Another right, a left, and another right sends the stars are sailing back through the ropes, under the ring apron. Referee Ruby Goldstein gives Lestarza, who's up at five, the mandatory eight count, forgetting in the excitement that the rule does not apply to championships. Rocky swarms all over the challenger to follow through his knockdown and end the fight. And there it is, the finish. Referee Goldstein breaks them up, sends Rocky back to his corner. Roland Lestarza retires to his corner. A courageous but beaten youngster. A boy who had come on a man's errand and done amazingly well for a while. A courageous but beaten youngster. A boy who had come on a man's errand and done amazingly well for a while. A boy who thought he could beat the champion because once, three and a half years ago in the garden, he had made a close fight of it. That extra detail of police around the ring apron is to ward off a riot like the one staged by Rocky's Rockton Rooters in Philadelphia after their idol took the heavyweight crown from Jersey Joe Walker. And so Rocky Marciano remains heavyweight champion of the world as he racks up his 45th consecutive triumph and his 40th knockout. He has shed the rust of inactivity and come on to win like a true champion.